we've got this uh, antique chair in and the seats collapsed on it and this can be quite a common thing so you can see here to see the seat sunk on that so what we're going to do is we're going to show you what's wrong with it and how to repair this and it is a reasonably simple repair and it's something you should be able to do at home so the chair is on the bench upside down now the bottom's off it so you can see what's going on here now there is broken webs you can see where they've snapped off here and it's all the way around this so what needs to happen now is all these webs that are fastened on here need to be removed so once all these webs are off the frame then it's a case of cutting the webs off the springs so I'll get on with that now get all them removed and then I can show you what the next step is after that the main thing is now I've got this bottom off it the webs off it so see all the springs here before you carry on any further the main thing to check is this hessian in here you need to check that none of it's split it is a common thing if this hessian splits if that's split it is a bigger job it usually splits along the front edge here this one's absolutely fine so this is okay to web the bottom of it so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put the webbing back on with tacks the reason I'm not going to do that is the holes are quite big and to try and what, what usually happens is if you try putting tacks in they tend to go back into the old holes so I'm going to use staples and I'm going to use a long staple they're not a standard length staple these are quite a long staple and these will hold the web in place So I've got the black and white webbing, which is the traditional webbing for this type of furniture. So to do this, what a lot of people do, the mistake a lot of people make, is these webs go across the top of the springs. So what people will do is fasten the webs and then try and pull the webs with the springs underneath it. Now to try and do that is very, very difficult. You can, you can never get the tension on the web correctly. So the easiest way is get the web and feed it in between the springs. So feeding it in between the coils of the springs, line it up with the center of the spring down here. So you can see the very bottom coil here, you can see the circle on it. Line the web up with the center of that. So then I'm just going to Take the list in place. So the front of that's fastened now. Come around the back. And I'm going to use a web stretcher. Now, to use a web stretcher, a loop in the web, feed it through the slot in the stretcher, a little wooden dowel which I've put a chain on so I don't lose it, put it through there, so then lever against the frame at the back and you can see the tension going on that web, so get the tension on it completely. Staple that. That's one web, one web in place, nice and tight. I'll do the same on the other, the other two now, and then I'll show you how to do the next bit. That's the webs on front to back so it doesn't matter which way you start you can do front to back or side to side whichever whichever way suits you now what I'm going to do with this is these webs are on and they're on tight get these springs you cut them over an angle and compress them 
underneath the web. The only thing you've got to be careful of doing this is when you're working with it sometimes they will try and ping back out again but as long as you've got them underneath the webs at the moment that's the main thing. So there's the, all the springs underneath those webs. So the next thing, get the web again. So this webbing now is woven underneath the other web there. You're not catching the spring, the spring's still loose. So you go under, over, under again be careful when you go in underneath here you don't catch any of the coils on the spring so now this web is woven in and out of the others so it's under over under making sure you don't catch any coils of the spring again centralize it with the bottom coil on that springs so this web again i'm using the web stretcher for these again So that's that web. This next web that goes in is woven the opposite way from this one. So it'll be over, under, over, and then the next one is opposite again. So you always alternate the webs. So that's that in. These springs can't come out now, they're underneath there. So I'll get the rest of these on and then I'll show you what the next step is then. So all the webs are in now, all woven in and out of one another. The springs are fitted underneath them. But if you look at the springs, they still move around. They need to be secured. So what will happen is if you just leave them like that and you start sitting on it, they'll end up cocking over and breaking. I've seen it where people try to weave these webs in and out of the springs to hold them in place. That's incorrect. So this now, if you get the spring and just move it so it's in the centre of this cross of webs, that should be lined up that spring because... When you're putting the webs in before, you've lined them up with the bottom coil on it. So when that's in place, you need some of this. And this is a linen thread, a mattress thread designed for this purpose. I've seen so many so-called professional upholsterers sewing in springs with incorrect twines and strings. This is the wrong one in here. This is just a normal string inside here. That's incorrect. But So this string here. Is, is incorrect but there's nothing I can do about that that's fitted in there but I've seen videos where upholsterers do it incorrectly so curved needle and the thread so if you pick up a bit of the web so you're going through the web and the spring pull the needle through and this is starting off so on here now Create a knot, this is the easiest way to do it. Pull the needle through the knot, and that then gives a slip knot. So you've got a slip knot there now. Pull that down, make sure it's nice and tight, and then lock off the slip knot with another knot. So that's not going anywhere now. So on these you need three stitches anywhere, equally space them, so go across from one side to the other. So now again, pick up that web and the spring. So the easiest way for you to do this at home would be if you've got your needle through there like that, get your twine and wrap it around the needle. Do it two or three times, pull your needle through. 
pull that. Just I, I normally keep your finger in there just to stop it getting knotted as you're pulling it. Pull it. Back on itself. And then if you pull that tight, that's locked off. So you've got two knots there now on that one spring. So now come across to this one here. Needle part way through. Wrap the twine round. There you are, that spring there is not going anywhere, that's solid. So now, what needs to happen now is we need to go from this spring to the next spring. And the way to do that is again, line up the spring with the web and you literally just go across. Always try and take the shortest bit, don't go right across the other side. So try and go across to the nearest point on the next spring. So why is that one done? So I'll do this on all the springs and then when that's done it's ready for the bottom. The seat's completely webbed now so all the webs are in, all the springs are completely secure you can see they don't move anywhere at all so they're all secure, stitched in. Last thing to do on the chair is a hessian bottom so this hessian gets secured over here and then that's the chair finished. The chair's completely finished now and you can see on here this domed effect on the seat and this is how it should be. All the springs are now pushed up, all the webbing's okay, so that seat now is as good as new.